A major enhancement in the latest release of OpenBridge Modeler is the capability to create custom footing templates through the new element library footings. This new feature allows the definition of non-rectangular 2D footing templates that are applicable to abutments and piers. In the new footings library, footing shapes can be drawn, pile locations can be specified and tagged, variables can be assigned to create parametric templates, and corner attributes can be defined to fillet or chamfer the corners of the footing. These footing templates can be applied to abutment and pier templates using the new footing type option custom, and piles are defined as X and Y distances measured from the working point. Currently, the transfer of the custom footings to leap bridge concrete and leap bridge steel are limited with the bounding box assumption, and there is no transfer to iron bridge. In OpenBridge Modeler, the new footings library is in the libraries group of the Utilities tab. I open it by clicking on Footings, and it shares the same XML file as the decks, barriers, beams, and columns. Several footing templates are available in the library, the circles, are the pile location markers, chamfered corners for this template are created using the corner attributes, same chamfered rectangle with piles, footings with rounded corners are also available and here this is achieved by setting the corner attributes mode to fill it and these are advanced shapes for footings of abutments with wing poles. Variables are defined for each of these templates to make them parametric and values of these variables can be modified when assigning the custom footing templates to peers and abutments. To show the steps of creating such a chamfered rectangular footing with piles, I will right click on the default folder and choose add template. Then I need to key in the template name, click OK and select the view to set as a temporary template editor. Once I left click here, the temporary view opens up with the working point for the template. I will keep the working point at the center of the footing and start drawing its perimeter. First, I will activate EcuDraw and the place line tool of the placement group and place the first corner of the rectangle by specifying the X and Y values in the EcuDraw dialog. For the long edge, the length of the line will be 14 feet and for the short edge, I enter 10 feet. Now I will draw the opposite edges and create a closed shape. The next step is drawing the pile location markers as circles and for that I will use the place circle tool in the placement group. In the place circle dialog method is set to center and I will specify the diameter as 1 foot. Pile type or the size of the circle doesn't matter here, OBM just picks up the center of the circle as the pile centroid and pile type is specified later in the pier or abutment template. Using EcuDraw I will set the X and Y for the center of this first circle. It will be a 2 feet offset from both edges. And once I place this I can use the mirror tool to create the other 3 pile location markers. So I activate the mirror tool in the manipulate group and with mirror direction set to vertical and make copy option checked, I click on the working point to create the second circle at the top right. Now I can select both and use mirror direction horizontal for the circles at the bottom half. The last step here will be tagging these circles as pile locations. Tagging tool is in the view toolbar. Tag element is pile location and action to perform is set to tag element. Now I will select the circles one by one. To keep adding to the selection I am holding the control key on the keyboard and left clicking on the circles. And when I am done selecting the four circles are tagged as PL1 to PL4. Next I will send this shape to the library by clicking on the import template from model button. And I answer this yes. Back in the library I will continue with the point constraints variable and corner attributes assignments. First I will increase the text size to make the point names visible. As a first step I will relate P3, the point at the bottom left corner, to the working point by specifying the horizontal and vertical distances to the working point using the horizontal and vertical point constraints. Here values are correct and variable for the horizontal constraint is horizontal offset. 
and vertical constraint variable is longitudinal offset. Then I will set the corner attributes mode to chamfer, set the distance to one foot, assign a variable named chamfer. I save all the changes for P3. The graphics view is updated. Now I see the chamfer at the bottom left corner. And I will continue with point P0, the top left corner. I can relate it to P3. Horizontally, P0 will be at the same position as P3. And the vertical distance between the two points will be the width of the footing. Again, using the horizontal and vertical point controls, but setting the parent point to P3 this time. Horizontal value is 0, vertical value is 10 feet. Variable for the vertical constraint will be width. I apply the same corner attribute assignments here as well. One foot chamfer with variable name chamfer. I save the changes and move on to the opposite corner P2. P2 shares the same edge with P3 as well. The two points are vertically aligned and the horizontal distance between the two is the length of the footing. So this time for P2 I will choose horizontal and vertical for the constraint mode. Parent is P3, horizontal value is 14 feet and the variable name is length. For the vertical constraint again, parent is P3 and value is 0. I apply the corner attributes and save. The fourth corner P1 is horizontally aligned with P2 and vertically with P0. So I will set the parent to P2 for the horizontal constraint and to P0 for the vertical constraint and lastly define the corner attributes. It is also possible to assign variables to the pile location marker points. Starting with PL1 I will set the point constraints mode to offset this time. I will specify the offsets from the two sides of the rectangle. First I set the parent to the short edge from P3 to P0 value is 2 feet and I will assign a variable to this constraint. Then for the offset from the long side, parent will be P0 to P1, the top edge. Value is 2 feet and I will assign a variable in this direction as well. One for the horizontal and one for the vertical offset. Corner attributes mode is none and I say. I will repeat the same for all pile location markers, each will have the same variable for the horizontal and vertical offsets, only the parent edges will differ. For PL2, horizontal offset will be from the right edge from P1 to P2 and the vertical offset will be from the top edge P0 to P1. For PL3, horizontal offset is from the left edge from P3 to P0 and vertical offset relative to the bottom edge from P2 to P3. And finally for P4, offsets will be relative to the right and bottom edges. So parent is P1 to P2 for the horizontal offset and P2 to P3 for the vertical offset. So this completes the chamfered rectangular footing template with four piles and the footing template I created is saved in the templates XML file. Now I will close the footings library and open the peers library to show how the custom footings can be applied to peer templates. There are already several examples in the default folder. Three column peer custom footing is one with three isolated custom footings. Three pile footing one and two are defined using the custom footing templates with three piles. Filleted footing with piles has a custom footing with rounded edges and many piles. And I can create a new template with a custom footing by copying an existing template like two lane 30 feet. I will enter a name for this new template. and click on the edit button to start editing the footings. In the footings tab, I will start by setting the footing type to custom, clicking next to template, 
it brings up the edit custom footing dialog which allows the user to choose a template from the footings library and, and assign new values to the variables of the template. Here I will set the template to the one I just created, rectangular chamfered 4 piles. I can modify the length of the footing by clicking on the variable name and checking the box next to it to make it active. I will add a new row to the table on the right side by clicking on the green plus and set the length value to 12 feet at the start and end. Start value is for the top of the footing and end value is for its base. Then I click OK to accept the change but to keep the footing centered below the columns I need to adjust the horizontal offset as well. So I go back to the edit custom footings window to reduce the horizontal offset to minus 6 feet in line with the change I made for the length. Now when I click OK the footings will be centered. Back in the templates window footing thickness can be set through the footing height field. As with other footing types I can adjust the rotation angle for the custom footings, assign transverse and longitudinal offsets and add concrete pads if necessary. Switching to the Piles tab in the Peer Templates dialog, I can specify the pile shape, but pile length and rotation angle needs to be set through the Pattern Layout dialog. Embed length for the piles can be defined here, and the template for each piles can be chosen from the drop-down list. Now I will click on Pattern Layout, and in the Pile Layout dialog, Rotation, Pile Length, and Longitudinal and Transverse Angles, can be specified for the piles of the custom footing, but name and horizontal and vertical offsets are grayed out. These are relative to the working point and cannot be modified here. One important note here is piles cannot be added to the custom footings unless their locations are defined in the footing template. I placed several piers with custom footings on a sample bridge as examples. The first one has the T-shaped footing with three piles. Second pier has the custom chamfered rectangular footing with four piles and its width and length changes along the footing thickness. The next one has the footing with rounded edges and multiple piles. And the last one has isolated chamfered rectangular footings. Now I can add another one on the support line using the place pier tool. I will pick the pier template that I just created. I select the support line for the pier. And the pier is placed, but the custom footings are not centered relative to the columns because of the offsets I assigned earlier inside the template. To fix this, I can go to Properties, then to Substructure Template Dialog. Here, I can also change the cap length, number of columns, remove the transverse and longitudinal offset assignments. I will also remove the concrete pad on the footings and the pier geometry will be updated accordingly and the decorators at elevation 0 for this pier look like this. Finally I will apply a custom footing on an abutment with wing walls. So I place a stem wall type abutment to lane 27 feet. Then place left and right wing walls on this abutment. Now I will change the footing assignment of the abutment in the substructure template dialog. In the footing tab I will set the footing type to custom instead of rectangular isolated. Then click here to select the template from the footings library, I will choose U shape straight and start modifying the variables of the template. I start with the right wing wall width, then the right wing wall length. Now I will repeat the same for the left wing wall. Then I will decrease the length 
and modify the horizontal offset accordingly. Vertical offset. And finally, the width. Click OK. And change the rotation angle to 180 degrees. And click OK one more time to accept all the changes. And the U-shaped footing will be placed under the abutment and the wing walls. And these are the decorators for the resulting abutment. Tools like Edit Elevation Constraints and Place Excavation can be applied to piers and abutments with custom footings the same way they are applied to other footings.